Hello, Craig. But uh, yeah, I had a little bit of workplace drama this morning. Tuesdays, we have, you because of like just weird shifting schedules, we used to have this meeting on Monday morning, but it got changed to Tuesday, and it's our big like clinic meeting that we do every week where we review patient files and, mm-hmm. you know, cross T's and dot I's on stuff that has to deal with like, all right, this person went to the hospital or, you know, there was this incident over at one of the, the group homes and you know, stuff like that. And normally it's everyone in our office plus the housing directors or supervisors, depending on who's kind of on staff that day for the, the group homes. Um, but Today, there were, like, some absences, and, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the dy- dynamics here. One of the, the caseworkers, her name is, is Laura, um, she's, like, it's not, it's not, like, a title that grants her, like, any kind of authority or anything, but it's sort of, like, she's, like, the lead care caseworker that we have, because she's got the most experience and things like that, like, uh, it, it's, you know, you know how places do. It's a way to shift a little extra responsibility onto somebody without paying them more. And after, after Katie left, cause that's what she was, then Laura took that, that position over and she's been doing it for the last October, November, uh, six, seven months, something like that. And housing directors, we've got a couple good ones, a couple of, eh, and then like one awful like person who's there and continues to to be there primarily i think because of nepotism either that or she's like really sucking somebody's dick hard like under the table um because she is to say she's incompetent at her job uh besmirches the word incompetence like it's, it's a lot of of um being a housing director for a group home facility like that means you you have to be on i mean obviously it's impossible for someone to know everything that's going on at all times nobody's omniscient or omnipotent but the responsibility for that is required is pretty close like you need to know all of the people that are in the house the staff and the patients you need to have a pretty rough idea of what everybody's sort of medical needs are um, they're almost always nurses as well, so they can fill in for a nursing position if there's an emergency or if the nurse is out. Because they do give medication and do some basic occasional medical treatment and stuff like that. So, like, you've got to wear a lot of hats. You you have to be available all the time. It's, like, it's, a, it's honestly a pretty rough position. I would not want to do that. <clears throat> um, and here I thought you would be in rough positions. Ew. But, but she is her name is stephanie she is seems to never ever be in the office she misses meetings all the time the staff the other staff over there will will be the ones who come onto the meetings or who fill us in and for a while they covered for her but they've stopped covering they're like yeah we don't know where she is she hasn't been to work and like since you know for for two days she just hasn't shown up nobody can get a hold of her and we don't know where she's do- where she's off to, what she's doing, and like the only reason she can't be fired that I can think of is like some pretty severe nepotism. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I don't I don't really know her. I don't know a lot of the higher ups for the uh, the housing facilities that we help ma- with their with their care. So I don't I don't know for certain. That's just a guess of mine. So she's not on the meeting this morning. And Laura, I'm I am the keeper of the office secrets as as the one of the therapists, but honestly, like the therapist who's like around the most and like talks mm-hmm. to people the most. Nothing wrong with Maria. I like Maria. She tends to be a lot more private and spends more time in her office as opposed well, to. Well, can you blame her with Sarah running around? <laughs> no, but I mean, I'll you know I interact with Sarah. Granted, Maria's Hispanic and Sarah. Yeah, I was about racist, to say so. um, uh, you, you're also white. That's true. You're you're, you're 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 a pale motherfucker. That's right. I am. But so anyways, um I I know that Laura has been pretty pretty upset and frustrated for a while because a huge part of her job with her being like quote unquote the lead person is like these extra responsibilities fall on her, stuff doesn't get done. The other caseworker that we have is honestly like pretty bad at her job. 
Um, and we're looking at hiring another one, but she hasn't, or no, we, we officially have hired another caseworker, but she doesn't start for two weeks, three weeks. Anyways. So, so Laura has been very frustrated for a while and she has, you know, confided privately that she's thinking about leaving. She's thinking about, uh, applying to a couple other positions, um, in the area that do similar or identical work just to kind of change it up. Um, and she's just kind of losing her patient patience. She's getting that like I'm done attitude with this kind of thing. And I, and I don't blame her. And so this morning it's it's like, you know, who's present for this meeting, who's on the call, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And they're like, Is is Stephanie here? And there's there's like silence. And Laura goes, Of course she's fucking not. Like out loud yeah. in the meeting with everyone. And there's like this look, and then she's like, Oh my god, did I say that out loud? And then um, one of the techs who's newer that's there for the meeting, like, tries to stand up for her. Be like, no, no, Stephanie's like, she's been doing this. She's done that. She called in for this other thing. And then Sarah was like, no, Laura's right. Like, she, she doesn't do anything. Like, you're new here. You'll learn. She doesn't do anything. And then the other tech, they got into a little bit of an, of an argument. There was no, like, screaming or yelling. Um and then they moved on from that to other things in the meeting. And then Josh came up. And Josh is a... What is he now? A nurse practitioner? But, like, we have psychiatric nurse practitioners, and he's, quote-unquote, I guess, a, a normal, a regular nurse practitioner, like a family nurse practitioner. He does general practice medical stuff. He's also, like, never there. Um you know, doesn't know, like, doesn't do stuff right all the time. Like, this is like a springboard for him to uh, something better in his career. And so there was a patient who had a medical issue, something wrong with their foot, and he, like, examined the foot, but, like, didn't treat the issue, just, like, documented that there was an issue. Mm -hmm. And Sarah got really upset at that. And I do understand that. It's like, this is your job. Like, you know what, this this patient's feet in particular are really gross because he's severely mentally ill, he doesn't shower or bathe, like, but it is your job to help take care of him so that he doesn't get, like, a foot infection and it get worse, and you're not doing your job. And she was, like, writing, like, in notes. Like, there's some people that had called in, and so she's, like, writing notes and, like, pass them across the table, like, just fire all of them, fire all of them. And then she's like, these fucking lazy people, like, just do your jobs. There was some, there was some drama. There was some some sparks that flew at the, at the meeting this morning. There was no yelling between any of our people. There was that little bit of a of a spat between Laura and and Sarah and the tech who was taking Stephanie's side. But a little bit of workplace drama. I'm like, okay, all right, here for it, I guess. Oh, the, fun uh, times. Yeah, I had some people come through too. Uh, think thankfully for for better or for worse, the only people who talked about the eclipse being the rapture were the housing patients so this the most mentally ill of the mentally ill so that but that uh, was interesting I, I did make a joke uh monday well we didn't get raptured and missy said no that's in 40 days okay was she being serious <laughs> or was she making a joke no no, no uh, she's very religious okay i saw something about a later date in April being the new rapture date. Like somebody posted something on Twitter and was like, really this shit already. But, but yeah. And then let's see, I had a, oh, new... there you go. Uh, <laughs> yes. And uh, for the audio listener, uh, Rach has just sent me a gift of people moving a goalpost. <laughs> I had, I had a client come in today. He was a brand new client. He was there for an evaluation. Um, but like not like an outpatient, not a group home person. And he was very angry and like conspiratorial. And it it I kind of understand his pipeline though, because he's US military to dealing with the VA to the system is, is broken. So like hardcore patriot to like hardcore like fuck fuck the system, fuck America, like Mm -hmm. libertarianism it's like oh you got so close buddy so close but he was a nice man just like as soon as he started talking about anything related to his medical history or issues you know mm -hmm. it's the goddamn bureaucracy and the fucked up insurance companies and i'm like yeah 
yeah, I have some problems with those things as well. We just drew different conclusions. Because you said, tear it all down, get rid of the system. And I say, let's replace the system with something different that seems well, to actually, actually work. Let's actually fix the system. Yeah, let's fix it, not just burn it all down and not build anything new in its place. Uh, but since we were talking about the Eclipse, did you hear about the Eclipse shooting? No. There was an Eclipse <laughs> shooting? I mean, I'm not surprised. I'm going to let you guess the state. Texas. Weird shit happening. And you pick Texas? <laughs> an Eclipse shooting? Yes. Any kind of shoot? Like, it's, so it's not Texas. No, it's, that, the it's, other, it's the other choice. Oh, there's there's a, a few others that could fall into the other choice because yeah, I could I could say Florida that would be my next choice uh, and that's it Florida okay all right but but also you could say Arkansas Alabama Kentucky Tennessee yeah, yeah, Georgia but, yeah, but it's, yeah but it's weird shit happening usually it's either Florida a weird place in California or Texas fair fair yeah absolutely mm-hmm. when it was gun stuff I went for Texas first but. So there was an eclipse Florida. shooting in Florida? Yeah, a woman claiming God told her to go on shooting spree because a solar eclipse shoots drivers on Florida interstate. Oh, boy. Oh, what a strange world we live in. Yeah, she's pretty much just ruined her life. She's 22. Uh, entered the highway 115 miles from the Alabama border in the Texas... Oh, sorry, in the Florida panhandle. Now you got me thinking, Texas. Headed west, she was driving a purple Dodge Challenger with Georgia plates. Within five miles, she fired into the passing car, into a passing car several times, spraying uh, auto glass and grazing bullets in the, uh, grazing drivers in the arm. The department said in a statement. She then fired at a second vehicle, hitting the driver in the neck. The driver was injured and treated at the hospital. Troopers stopped the woman after she drove for about ten miles and found her. With an AR-15 rifle and a 9 millimeter handgun, because of course. Right? Of course. Of course. Uh, the, the American special. hmm And the thing is that Florida was even in the path of the total eclipse, you know? Did Florida get any amount of eclipse? Like, were they close enough to really be able to see any, any at all? Uh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> we were not within the path of totality. Where I was specifically, we had like 90% coverage. Yeah, I think I was like 92, 93. Yeah. Uh, but of course it was cloudy, so it was like everything got really, yeah, like dark, and it was like uh, it was going to storm, and that was about it. Yeah. But yeah, it's just uh, another case of people needing some mental health care, not getting it, and then going on a shooting spree. Yeah. I, and I And no, I'm not one of these that says every mass shooting... Is because, you know, broken mental health that uh, care of the U.S. But when uh, some weird bitch is saying God told her to go on a shooting spree. <laughs> some on... weird bitch. <laughs> I've been hanging out with him back too much. <laughs> oh, you're not wrong. You're not uh, wrong. Go, goes on the interstate and starts shooting at random drivers because of the eclipse, because God told her so. That's mental health problems. That's a case of bitch be crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, mass shootings in in the United States are are a multifactorial problem. I mean, the biggest... We've talked about this before, and, and my position on it has evolved a smidgen over the years. I mean, the biggest factor is is gun control legislation is so lacking in the United States and so mm-hmm. lacking consistent enforcement but the united states also has a poverty problem and a mental health care problem and um you know a lack of social services problem Mm -hmm. and so like you get all these factors and you know of course it increases the rate in which people feel either desperate or feel like they're justified or they're having a mental breakdown or you know I i could keep oaring so it's mm-hmm. not. I used to think like it was all a gun control issue, but my position has evolved over the years. Well, the fact so, that gun, we can't even get, is like that we can't even get common sense things like the you know, red flag laws passed and enforced because you know people there uh, making domestic violence threats. Yeah, that means that you should lose your fucking guns. 
And those those work. The, and, and I mean, they work everywhere that they're put in place. California, in some areas, uh, have red flag uh, laws, which have had a marked decrease in, in shootings in California in the areas where those laws are in place. I mean, it's not to zero. It's it's I won't say it's impossible. Maybe in America it would be impossible to get it to zero just because we already have so many firearms out in the wild. But they had pretty drastic reductions in in school shootings, mass shooting events, um, and just sort of major gun death as part of crime, related to crimes. One of the many podcasts I listened to talked about that. They did a like a Patreon bonus episode talking about gun control. But anyways, work drama, we had some of it today, and then I had a couple interesting people. Mm-hmm. About the only thing really interesting that happened outside of work today, or, or well, just this past week, uh, supposedly in Charleston, a woman in a hospital ground stopped a bus. This happened Monday. And the driver told me about it because it was all over the radio just before I got on the bus and he was laughing his ass off. Yeah. he uh, This woman st- uh, waved down the bus, d- got in front of it. Dr- uh, all the, uh, k- uh, the KRT buses have uh, bi- uh, bike racks on the front. She dropped the bike rack, jumped up on the bike rack, and started dancing on it. <laughs> okay. Then she, t- then she took off the hospital gown. And started dancing buck naked in front of the bus, screaming at the bus driver to open the door. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> I don't care how like I, I I I'm assuming that she wasn't like super attractive, but even if she was, mm-hmm. at that point it's like, no, I'd rather not be stabbed. You don't look like you've got a knife, but you might be hiding one. Uh well after uh I got on the bus and yeah, you know, the driver. I'm at the. I get on at the end of a bus. Uh, tr- uh, uh my, well, one of their routes. Yeah, kind of stumbled there for a moment. Uh, and the bus driver sometimes uh, gets up and you know uh, gets up and walks around or goes takes a shit. You know, uh, I'm hearing on the uh, radio. Yeah, she's right down the street now. Uh, tell the cops that uh, uh, go down a couple blocks and start looking for her there. <laughs> oh. And just dispatch and uh, a couple of the drivers going back and forth like, uh, like, uh, have you guys seen her? What's she wearing? Nothing. Our birthday suit. Speaking of naked people, though. Uh-oh. It's, I, you, so it's been a while since I've seen a naked person in therapy. Or, you know anybody's bits because of where I used to work, both in terms of location Mm -hmm. demographics and with, with, uh, patient demographics, I used to see stuff like that a little bit more, um, combination of people's specific mental illnesses, again, poverty levels, types of trauma, et cetera, et cetera, like a whole bunch of reasons. Like, I mean, it's not like I was seeing like naked people every day. Like it's not like I was seeing tits out every day at work or whatever, but like it happened. Like, I don't know, once a month or so. Um, And I've told a couple of, I think I've told you a few stories, told a Mm -hmm. couple on the podcast over the years, like whatever. But it's, it's been a while, Uh, you know, different location, different demographics, different, you know, type of clientele that I see because of like the licensure qualifications that I have now and stuff. But I had, I had a client of mine and I, I used to see her and then some stuff happened she moved out of state for a little while. She's been gone for about a year. She came back. Um, and she's getting back into therapy. And she's got a new baby. So it was a breastfeeding moment. But it's like, we're talking. We're going through. I'm updating her paperwork. And, like, you know, I'm like, she doesn't say, you know, hey, I'm, I'm about to breastfeed. Like, lots of times people will ask me, like, oh, are you okay with me breastfeeding? And, like, I get it. It's polite. Like, I don't care. You know, people do that. But, like, she doesn't ask me. She doesn't even tell me, like, hey, I'm about to get my tits out to breastfeed. Like, I'm typing, and I look up, and she's got her tits out, and she hasn't got the baby up yet. So I'm like, huh, nice tits. (laughs) 
Because it's like, she's the kind of person that I have, like, this kind of rapport with. It's not like I'm talking to, like, you know, a granny or, like, a stranger or something. And she just, like, she looks at me, and then she looks down, and she goes, yeah, thanks. And then, like, she picks her baby up and, like, starts breastfeeding. I'm like, okay. And then we just go back to, like, doing a thing. I'm like, huh, that's the first time I've seen tits at work in a while. (laughs) At least they're recent. Yeah. Yeah. She is a very attractive... How old is she? 20? Mid to late 20s. She's 27, 28, something like that. I could look. I can actually just log in and look because now I'm like, uh, she's supposed to be back in next week for an appointment, I think. Oh, what do you mean database login failed? You tell me that all the time and I just hit refresh mm-hmm. and you start working. But uh, that was on Monday last week, Tuesday last week. Mm-hmm. Tuesday last week. How old is she? 27. So yeah. Yeah, she's 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 attractive. So I was like, oh, hey, looky there. Neato. I think that's all the stories that I've got. I don't have any other stories from the last week or so. And then the thing I said to you about playing with my kid, that'll probably come up on a on a future episode once we've played through some of the series. We played for about two and a half hours today. Pretty much right after I got home from work. Like he had asked me this morning when I was taking him to school, like, Dad, can we play Halo tonight? And I'm like, well, you got your homework, and you're supposed to clean your room. So when those things are done, yeah, we can play. And I got in from work, and he's like, I did my homework, and my room is clean. I'm like, okay, good job. I need a shower. <laughs> Let me shower first, and then we'll, we'll get started. Um, we haven't, like, talked about this. The assumption, I'm guessing, is that we're recording, but, like, just to make sure, like, We've we've got this Franken stuff, but like, do you want to record? Are you in the mood to record? Are you? I mean, awake enough? We're, we're, we're here. We're we're here. <laughs> we're here. We're queer. Well, at least one of us is. <laughs> You're gay as a handbag full of rainbows. <laughs> that sounds lovely. Um, I only have one game that I played this week. Uh, well, I'm dipping into my backlog of games to talk about. I actually need to get on endless space. I bounced hard off of it already once. I've got a... I, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm maybe 150 turns in to a game I started on easy to just, like, re-familiarize myself with it. And I reckon I'll finish that mm-hmm. before I start another one, but... Well, I'm trying to figure out the game. And every time I click, and it's like, wall of text explaining every single icon. It just, my eyes kind of glazed over after the third or fourth one. Yeah. I just, I turned off the tutorial and I'm like, okay, we're going to play on, I think it's the second easiest difficulty. Um, I, I, I just really miss a nice playable tutorial, you know? I can't think of a 4X game, and maybe there, maybe there's one out there. I can't think of Civ? a 4X game that does. Is Civs, I've, I haven't played a Civ tutorial ever. I think Civ has, if not a playable tutorial, it's a, an intelligent, you know, that walks you through, but doesn't just wall of text you. Yeah. So i got a couple options on what to talk about. Uh, I did jump on the look on the uh, recent bandwagon. I played it a bit. The recent bandwagon? Baltaro. Oh, okay. I have, actually, actually, more time than I expected in it. <laughs> uh, but that might be because I have it on the Steam Deck and I've been you know, poking at it on there. Or Splatoon 3 again with the DLC side order. I'm leaning towards Splatoon 3. Go for it. Especially since you know, Nintendo killed uh, the online functionality on Splatoon, uh, Splatoon 1 this week. I'm not sure if we really had a lot to talk about on it, so that didn't punch it up yeah do you want to just pick a, i saw okay so i saw down here at the bottom how hidden nazi symbols were the tip of the toxic iceberg i haven't watched this week's gymquisition but i saw that it that's like the the thumbnail yeah i i hadn't got a chance to see gymquisition at all because i got home yesterday just dead yeah and Oh, there's a yawn. And I ended up doing like eight and a half hours today because 
some of the people coming out on evening shift were uh, held up. So I got tagged out of the chicken pen and I worked the line a bit. And they also, it, it's even worse, Jared, Jared. Occasionally they put me on the register and make me interact with people. Gross. Gross and I'm, people. And I'm, and I'm looking over my shoulder and I see Joe just uh, said there, uh, his arms crossed, looking at me, uh, really confused about me interacting with people. <laughs> like, what the hell is going on here? You did it, though. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, I'm going to start. Uh, well, I'm one of those weirdos that feels like I have to accessorize my uniform. So on my ball cap, I have like eight or nine of my random pins I've collected. And I might have to uh, start putting them on the front if they keep putting me on register. I just had a, a, a flat, for some reason, a flash of the, um, cause this isn't quite the same situation, but from office space, yeah. when he, yeah. when he goes yeah, to yeah, I'm, at the yeah, diner for the first time. Yeah, yeah, I'm voluntarily doing it. Okay. That, yeah, that was like what popped into my brain. Yeah. Trying well, to, it's, trying to like it's more, that. I, I wanted to do something different, you know? Yeah. So what uh, do we want to tackle? Um, I don't know. Do you have anything in particular that sticks out to you on the topics we've got pulled up here? Well, that's the thing is that there's no really strong topics outside of the one, and neither of us saw Jim Quisition, so we're just kind of... Well, we have to have our own opinions about it, right? <laughs> yeah. Although, um, racist memes... Uh, and Nazi shit. It, it, neither of us are Republicans, so it's pretty obvious what we're going to think. Yeah. Although I do support the Stop Killing Games movement. I also support that. I hadn't heard about it until till looking at this article you posted, or the link to the article, but I support it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, why not? We can also just keep it simple. We don't have to do mm-hmm. a big one. I actually have two games I could talk about. I doubt I'll talk about too. Mm-hmm. Katie, Katie plays Hearthstone. She has mm-hmm. kind of played Hearthstone off and off, or off and on for a long time. We used to play a little bit together. Mm-hmm. And she was like, hey, you should play Hearthstone. We should play Hearthstone for like date night. I'm like, okay. So we played Hearthstone. Um, mm-hmm. Boy, howdy. Is Hearthstone different than the last time I played? I oh, know last time I played it. Was pretty much uh, essentially pay to win, technically. Yeah. Uh, if you didn't get really lucky Wait, on oops. the on your card pulls, uh, you're in for a very bad time unless you just shelled out for more card pulls. Battlegrounds mode is new since the last time I played, which is actually a lot of fun, and kind of removes that issue. Um, it's like you play with up to eight up to eight players mm-hmm. and it's a random deck builder as you go. Um, there's you get random heroes. Um, and then is this it, always in the game or is it one of those modes that pop up for like two weeks and then goes away? It's been in the game for a while. It, the very, I don't know if it's always in the game, but it's been there for a while. It's got a whole thing built up around it for like cosmetic heroes and cosmetic battleground maps. And, I know that Katie and King play it because King doesn't have any any cards, you know, not, no decks, mm-hmm. no nothing. And so since Battle, Battlegrounds is, like, all built from random draws as you play, because, like, the, the, it's like you've got, like, the the eight players and everybody gets, like, every every turn or every round kind of has two phases to it. The first phase is you buy cards from the, like, the tavern uh barkeep and like there's mm-hmm. random cards that he lays out and there's some strategy to it i, I don't have it fully figured out yet because i've only done like three rounds of this or three games of this but it's like yeah, you I might can have up- to actually check this out you can upgrade the 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 cards that he has to give you it's like you get you know you get gold or energy or whatever just like you you did before every turn it increases the amount that you get and so you spend some, you can choose to upgrade the cards that he has, you can buy cards, and you sort of build your hand as you go. Um, and what you build stays every round. So like the first phase of the round is like you do this, you buy from him, and you, you build your hand, you build your, your board. 
And then the second phase, it automatically battles against another player, and there's like a rotation, and you can see who it is that you're battling against, like each round. Um, and you can get like you can't see their board until they actually fight you, but you can like hover over their icon, and it can give you like it gives you some basic stats about what they've got. Um, and this goes until there's only one player left. So there's a couple of strategies I've picked out. But, and and I would imagine they rotate the the cards out because mm-hmm. right now what I've played was there's like uh, beasts, dragons, and pirates, and you want to get some synergy going where you can to try to build up your your board to be stronger. But yeah, every round the board um, like stays. And so even if all your stuff gets killed, the board still stays. And so you can sell your cards to get gold back or keep mm. upgrading them. Or So it's like you, you just build as you go. It's an interesting mode, but I don't fully understand all of the strategies yet. And there's things like the longer you go without upgrading the, the tavern cards, the cheaper it gets to do so and, and stuff like that. So risk-reward strategy, all that kind of jazz. Yeah, the last time I played Hearthstone, they had just the primary mode uh, wild mode, which was uh, yeah, you know, all the cards, not just the ones that they've shuffled out of the primary rotation, and occasionally a tavern brawl. Yeah, which pretty much the only time I played was tavern brawls, and I had several in a row that was pretty much impossible if you hadn't sunk a bunch of money in the game, and I just was I, I was not interested in spending that much money on a free to play game. Yeah. I'm uh I'm gonna be right back. My kid just started playing a game on Steam, and he's supposed to have been asleep or been Uh-oh. in bed over an hour ago. So, oh, right back. Oh, gave it to old on him. His laptop is now in my office. Uh oh, he was uh, he's in trouble. Yep, yep. Kid needs to learn about offline mode. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Here, so, kid. Let, let me show you a trick. Yeah. All right. Uh, oh. I I pulled up the stop killing games. Anything else? I mean, it feels it, like we have to at least address deck nine, doesn't it? With this shit going on, it feels sorry. It feels like what? We have to at least address the uh, the Nazis in the room. Okay. Which it's so sad because Life is Strange is such a inclusive series. Damn, right? Yeah. All right. Copy that. All righty. That's two news articles. We've got a couple of games. And it's it's 1030, so... Yeah. I think that's probably fine. 